Banter Podcast with Cole and Jettis. Right about you, I want you to get yourself and your soul together. This man will make your liver quiver. This man will make your bladder splatter. Let's all welcome the world's godfather of soul. Cole and Jettis. Uh, it's Geddes, actually. Jettis. Geddes. Jettis. 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 Fuck you. Yes! What the fuck is happening, people? Welcome to the General Matter Podcast. It's Wednesday, the 25th of March. This should have been out on the 24th of March, um, but the dates don't really matter because it's all just blurring into one because we're all locked inside and probably going to eat a fucking family member in the next couple of days. <coughs> I thought it was going to do one week of fucking the shutdown podcast, and in fact, it's really only kicking off this week w- with a full lockdown. We're in the midst of the COVID-19 slash coronavirus fucking pandemic, and it is sweeping the country. Um, And as predicted, people didn't take it seriously. They're like, sure, it's only fucking Italians, get it? And then, you know, people don't pay attention. They're writing about, they're fucking around. We had fucking, uh, what's his name, Boris Johnson on the telly. You know, still looking like a fucking scarecrow. You know, Oh, this is a full lockdown. You shouldn't be in groups bigger than two. And everyone went, oh, yeah, we, we don't do essential work. We're going to shut the shop up. And they shut the shop. And then they go, what do we do? We'll go to the fucking beach. I hope you fucking die first. That's the sort of fucking idiot. That's the sort of idiot that, like, is just going to be like, I will. I don't know. I don't know what happened. You see, we finished work. And then all of us went to fucking Port Stewart Strand. And then, you know. You had a load of fucking chips and sat in the car talking shit for a minute. No, went home and had a, fuck, a couple of cans of beers and slept on the couch and all, all ten of us. And then the next minute, you know, I have fucking COVID-19. Dickhead. Fucking dickhead. When they say stay at home, they mean stay at home. I talk, you know, I'm not a smart guy, but I talked about a thing that I watched the other day when it had all the little things bouncing about the place. They're like, this is what happens if you go about your day. And the wee balls were just... Boing, hitting two more balls, boing, they were hitting two balls, boing, and it was just growing out of control so quickly. And that's exactly what's happened because people won't fucking stay at home. And that's all it takes. That's all it fucking takes. Imagine, imagine someone was like, guys, the end of the world is encroaching. And people were like, oh no, what do we do? Do we buy loads of bog or all that? And they're like, nah, here's what you do. Sit on your fucking hole and watch Simpsons because it's on Disney+. Plus. And people are like, I don't know if I can cope with it. And you're like, what were you doing before? Staying at home watching Friends? Well, now you can watch The Simpsons. All right. I don't know if I can manage that. Just stay at home and do fucking nothing, you fucking heap. And I've witnessed that. By the way, that's what people are going to do. You know, they, they, oh, can't wait for Disney Plus. And Disney Plus finally comes and they fucking sign up for the full year. And then they go, what did you do? I watched Simpsons. Oh, the program that's on for free every fucking night. Yeah. Oh, I just binge watched it. Did you watch anything else? No. Do you watch any Disney movies? Nah, not really. You know what I mean? I know what happens. Something racist. You know what I mean? Something happens. Someone gets in a bit of trouble. A bit of conflict. A bit of resolution. And there's always a body that's foreign. And that's that's Disney for you. Um, And, uh, you know, I've seen people who are like, you know, p- people going like, man, how are you dealing with the fucking, the thing? And some people are like, man, I'm climbing the walls. Oh, I'm really worried about not having money. Oh, whatever. And then I know some cunts that are some lazy motherfuckers who are like, I'm coping all right. And you're like, are you? Did anything change? I never get sick. Do you ever leave the house? I mean, that's not a big lifestyle change for me, to be honest with you. Or maybe whatever Amazon packages I get delivered, or maybe fucking cut them open and squirt some shit on it. Anyway, everyone's on full lockdown, um, especially us. I mean, I say, I say there's been a lifestyle change for hardly anybody. We haven't really had that much of a lifestyle change because, as you well know, my wife, Maureen, had our baby, then was diagnosed with lymphoma, so then started chemo. And they're one of, she's one of the immunodeficient people where, like, you, you, if, you got, if she got a regular cold or flu or whatever, it would be very dangerous. I've already been taking those precautions you know doing gigs not talking to people you know different shit um just not being in crowds too long making sure i wash my hands fucking all the time not not bringing anything gross in, into the house uh, i've been doing that for ages she's been avoiding big crowds she's been avoiding going to tesco's you just can't really get sick it's the one thing they say to you when you're getting chemo don't get sick 
So she's been avoiding that. So realistically, we've been on fucking lockdown anyway. And then when it was officially announced there by old Boris jo- Joe Bags, um, it was, uh, that's the name of the podcast. Do you want that? Do you fancy that, guys? Boris Joe Bags. Um, so once it was announced, it, it, we went full lockdown. We'd been sort of slowly stocking up. Not crazy. Mm. Nothing crazy. Um, but, you know, just as and when, just keep, you know, stocking up a wee bit. As you do, you kind of when you have a baby anyway. But uh, she had one last chemo treatment. And normally, the type that she gets, she, you go in for a week and you get a bag of chemo every day, basically, for like <clears throat> four 24-hour cycles. Um, but this time, they were like, listen, the ward that we normally have you in has a visitor ban. Nobody's allowed in. Um, and we're trying to limit people being in as much as possible. So... Basically, if you can come in and we'll give you the, the drugs in one go. So that was our last mission. That was our last fucking, like, 007. Let's get to the hospital, get in, do this shit, get out without fucking touching any surfaces and get you home. And now we're on official lockdown. Gang, gang, gang. Official lockdown. And of course, the podcast was supposed to be out yesterday, but we got home and no one's allowed to come to us. Normally, we have a bit of help from our parents or sisters or something, which is amazing. Um, but we're trying to limit contact even like that because they're in contact with people who have been working. So it's kind of like we're just on our own now. So when we got home, Warren was very tired and I was multitasking, you know. Some people might go, oh, you're doing the job of a mother, I believe that's called. Um, you know, cooking taking care of the baby, let Maureen sleep, doing all that shit. I'm pretty much a hero. And when this is all over, I hope there's some sort of award. First goes to me, then second of all, spare a thought for the nurses because they're also working really hard. <laughs> I mean, it's so funny. We were talking to the girl in the hospital and she was like, she was like, we haven't been affected yet, but I know rightly what will happen is a lot of cancer treatment will be, unless it's like really, really fully essential. Not that cancer, any cancer treatment isn't, but there there are, say, like, Maureen's treatment was, basically, once it was in the process of happening, it was kind of all good. Um, you know, so, say, Christmas, they were able to, like, postpone it. For, they'd be like, right, normally you've been in this date, but we'll give you another fucking few days or a week to just get over that gap of Christmas so you can enjoy Christmas, and then you can come back in. Um, so, that's kind of they'll probably just be doing the essential stuff. And this girl was like, listen, we'll probably get redeployed around the hospital doing different jobs. You know, they'll probably be like, we're not doing as much cancer treatments just because the people are so vulnerable. So we'll just be around around different parts of the hospital doing different jobs. And you're just like, oh my God. And the, you know, she, the way she was talking was almost like, oh yeah, I'm just going to be here. And then eventually there's going to be this big spike in people within who are infected by this. And uh, I'm probably more than likely going to get it because I work here. And that's just the way we've planned out for that. And you're like, cool. Thank you for your service. Fucking terrifying. And I'll tell you what, if anything good comes of this, hopefully it's fucking nurses get paid more money. Because regardless of what the crack is, they just have to turn up. You know, we, even nurses that were on our on Maureen's ward, you know, you're talking to them. They're like, you know, young young women with young children. And they're like, oh, yeah, my baby didn't fucking sleep at all last night. And we were like, oh, our baby didn't sleep last night. And she's like, yeah, but I had to work a 14-hour shift. And all you have to do is come in here and fucking sit and eat crisps, you fat cunt. Talking to me, obviously. And I was like, yeah, no, it must be terrible. <sighs> Crazy. And you get the photos online of the people who fucking have been like, you know, working these ridiculous you know, back-to-back shifts with, with the full gear on and they've got, like, fucking scars on their face from just these masks digging into them for 14 hours. It's absolutely wild. And you can't sit at home? You fucking dick. Unbelievable. Obviously, like, if you got to go to the shops in and out, if you want to go, for, you know, I... I you know, it could be spreading bad news. I don't think there's anything wrong with putting your headphones in and going for a fucking run down the street where you're not going to stop and talk to anybody. You know, just do a fucking couple of laps, come back, get on your bike, go for a cycle. You know, go. The, the, the thing that I've invented, 
and I want to, I want to, I want to take uh, full responsibility for it. Um, I want to take full responsibility for it. I want full credit for it. I invented coffee dogging, and if you want to do this, this is where you find a space, say like a Tesco car park, and you drive up and you sort of park park one car, say going north like that. You know, driver's side to the right there as usual, and then you get the other one pulls up in front of your bonnet. You can do this in a sort of square or triangular or pentagonal sort of shape or hexagonal, whatever how many cars there is. And then the next guy, he pulls up like that, driver's side to the right, obviously, with the you know the back of the car sort of in the, in the middle of the, uh, the sort of bonnet there. And then the next guy, he comes up, you know, in front of that guy. And you can kind of get like a little square going or a little triangle with all the doors pointing in. And you're far enough away. You know, you're definitely, you're definitely more than two meters away. Also, you're in your own car behind the window. And you just put the window down a wee bit and you go, guys brought me own coffee from home in a flask. Like it's the fucking 1940s. Uh, I didn't go, uh, now that joke wasn't, I didn't go far enough back for that to be funny. But probably it was accurate because you, you might have got a flask at that time. If I'd have said like 1780s, maybe the flask wasn't invented. But, um, so, yeah, and you just sit in a circle and you're like, hey, what's crack? Yeah, not much. What have you, what's in your sandwich? You're like, ah, oh, it's chicken, sweet. I've just got Jaffa cakes, I'll probably eat them all cool and that's a safe way to socialize some people would say don't go out of your house at all but that's that's like a nice second place you know if you can if you have the space to do it meet up in your cars and just chat you can chat your your tooth you're probably five meters away from them in your own car in your own filth so coffee dogging is uh is a thing there'll be no fucking though if you want to just you know if you want to in move that into some like actual real dogging what i would stick to is just you know just just pull yourself off in the car and someone can look over now what started as a nice thought there just just fucking took a left turn into the woods and i apologize for that uh speaking of the woods i'm wearing complete camouflage today the carhartt t-shirt i was already wearing and then uh I walked into the garage and I bought this hat as a prop for a thing ages ago and forgot that it's just matching camo now. So I look like a full prepper now. I'm fully prepped. But instead this time, not for, instead of for like a zombie apocalypse, I'm just prepped to feed a baby for for the next month or two. If, if, if the shit really hits the fan, you know, Eddie's encroaching on five months, you can start to introduce solids at six. And you should be supplementing that with milk still. But... You know, sooner or later, he'll be sitting down to a fucking omelette like the rest of us. Which I wouldn't surprise you. He's too big now. He's six foot two. Um, so what else have we got to talk about? Major congratulations to Maureen's dad, who um, I still need to donate money. You see, that's the thing. We're, we're so close to them that we're like, I need to donate money to him. I'll give it to you when I see you. All that shit. Never got around to fucking doing it. Unbelievable. But he... Uh, he, his birthday, I want to say, was on the 19th or 18th or something like that. And he's like, I'm going to run 60 kilometers on my birthday, which fell in the middle of the week. So we had to move it to the Saturday. And <clears throat> 60 years old, and he's going to run 60 kilometers. Way to make everybody feel like a fucking piece of shit. You know? And here's the thing. I would have loved to contribute to that. You know, Maureen's sister... First of all, Maureen's sister, Susie, the youngest one, she accidentally ran a marathon, basically. They were running and running and running, did a bunch of laps, and then she was like, how far is it now? And they were like, right, you've literally run nearly 40 kilometers, so if you want to run 400 more meters, you've run, a, you've run a marathon. And she's like, okay, and she ran off for like fucking, you know, a minute and ran back, and was just like, everyone was like, yeah, she just ran a marathon with fucking very little prep, which, and she couldn't walk, it was hilarious, but... Very impressive. Her other sister kind of chipped in a bit. She, I doubt she's been doing much running at all. She ran 10k. And I, like, I had all the intention of running. And then about three weeks ago, hurt my fucking hip or something. And was just unable to do anything. Like, anytime I sat for too long, sat in the car, walked about, stood too long, I was just like, my hip is fucking killing me. And it was weird too, because the range of movement wasn't fucked up. It was just that, like, at certain points it was sore 
and it has eased up a lot in, in the last couple of days. But I had basically just been fucking sitting in a car, sitting in a house, bent over, holding a baby or something. And it got to the day and I was like, I haven't done any prep for that. There's no point in me chipping in. And they cracked on. Not that anyone needed my help or needed to fucking slow their pace to have me follow, follow them. But I was so fucking embarrassed and ashamed of myself. There was like, I'm just fucking not going anywhere near it. And we did go up at about two o'clock. They'd been running th- since nine. And they were like, yeah, that's the, that's the fucking, that's about 40 kilometers of it done. And uh, I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, And then they, uh, and their dad just ran on. A few people joined in with him. And then, uh, yeah, he just, he, he wrapped it up. And he, this is what I noticed, right? This is what I noticed. Whenever we got there, they just wrapped up sort of like a marathon. Dutch Frank had already stopped because his knee was sore. I say already stopped. He probably ran like 30 kilometers. And then her sister, Susie, she was wrecked. As well she should be. Um, and she, everyone was laughing. She could hardly walk. And she sat down in the van. And she couldn't even fucking get back up again. And her dad was basically like, I so who's running? Anyone running? Like, it looked like everybody had ran for a certain amount of distance. And then he turned up in the car and was like, I don't worry, I'll take over here. You, you ready? Like... Everyone else is pink in the face and flustered and all. And he's just standing there like, you're like, Did you, have you ran yet at all? And he's just like, I eating a sausage roll on his way. Fucking goddamn freak. Unbelievable. But that's, from, from that moment on, I was like, bro, you know, we got to fucking sort the health out. Like, because people are running 10Ks at the drop of a hat here. You know, Maureen's dad's been running his whole life. And he didn't even really train like you probably should when you're running that distance. He just fucking was like, listen, I know what a 10k feels like. And we'll see what six of those feels like. Takes off. Outrageous. Freak. But I was like, listen, I can't be, I can't be walking around here, you know. And this is my father-in-law. You know, any every, anytime I attempt something, Maureen's just going to be like, yeah, well, my dad... And you're like, listen, don't, let's not put anyone in the same category as your dad for a second. Because he's a fucking freak. Okay. Um, it, the, if, I, if I'm built for anything, it's lifting. On the spot. And I've said this before, if you need a short, sharp burst, if you want, like... You know, if you want me to tip over a portal, if you want to just charge into that and knock it over, I'm your guy. Are you trapped under the wheel of a mini? I'm your guy. Anything you need like that. Is it like, listen, I've been to fucking little here in the middle of this uh, pandemic and I need one run under the house and I just go pick a finger, bang, 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 20 bags. That's two on each finger and then we make our way in the house. That's when I really shine. Or if you need a poster made or if you need a funny video made. And that's that's my world. If you need 60k run, listen, my legs would be stiff if I drove 60k, so fuck that. But very impressive. Um, I wonder is the link still open because I should post... Let me write that. Post... Post the link to that if anyone wants to chuck them a few quid. Also, it was for charity for lymphoma and leukemia and I. So what the fuck, like... What are we doing around here? We were supposed to do a gig for the same um, for the same charity, but you know you can't do gigs at the minute, so fuck all that. I'm also wearing a camouflage watch to go with the full kit, so shout out, shout out to MVMT for um, set. Well, I bought this watch, but sure, fuck it. Um, also, just to co- just to cover one question that was on the old Patreon. Now, shout out to this guy because. Basically, if you don't know what the crack is, I have a Patreon set up for this podcast. It's patreon.com forward slash general banter podcast. If you're not familiar with that, what it is, is it is like a donation system, like a payment system where you can donate to a certain podcast or show or whatever it is that you watch online. A lot of people just have one show and they're like, listen, can you like a blind boy where he's like, can you send me some money? Because this is my only form of income and I'm doing this podcast for you every week. Now. Whenever I started doing podcasts, for some fucking reason, they were all free. They were just like, the podcasts are free. That's the way it is. And they were funded by ads, basically. And you had to be of a certain level of success to get a sponsorship on your podcast. I have Nothing has ever suited my podcast. If your podcast is big enough, people are like, I don't give a shit what your content is. We're going to put our name to it. Mine's not that big where people are like, yeah, we just don't give a shit. Just fucking get it out to these people. 
Because sometimes I say some horrendous shit and they're like, we don't want our name next to that. And that's fine. Then Patreon came along and people were like, listen, I've been putting my show out every Tuesday. I would like you to pay me for that now if you can. And some people are like, great stuff. I really appreciate this. Here's some money. And for quite some time, that's all I did. I kept trying to think of a way where I'm like, what can, you know, how do you fucking tease? But some people were contacting me going, man, I listen to your podcast for years. Can I contribute to it? Which is crazy to me. That's that's the thing that made me get the Patreon in the first place. You're like, when you're getting to the point where people are asking, can they fucking give you money? Now, I fucking dabbled in how to sort that out for years. Now I've figured it out. Now I do this podcast. This is one day late. This should be out yesterday. But this is a bit of a weird week. Every Tuesday the podcast will be out. And from here on out, God willing, I'll have a podcast out Thursday and Saturday. Three podcasts a week, hopefully. And uh, the other two will be on Patreon. And at the minute, there's no tiered system. So if you want to donate fucking $3, you'll get two extra podcasts. If you want to donate fucking 5 or 10 you'll get two extra podcasts. At a certain point, once we're in the flow of things, I might make an adjustment and go, okay, if you're paying up to $5, you get an extra podcast. And if you're paying any more than that, you get whatever, another one, or and any other bonus material. Now, just thought I would talk about that for a second. That's That's obviously very important for people who are performers in this time especially comedians where they're like listen i can't perform in front of crowds i can't give people a live experience but what i can do is provide content for them that's hopefully funny and if you want to contribute to that since we're not allowed to earn a living now much like loads of people you can contribute to it a wee bit and that's the way it is now i take questions for the podcast on the patreon and what i'm saying here is for me no matter what you can afford to donate the biggest thing that i'm impressed at is that you made the fucking effort to get patreon look up the podcast put in your fucking bank details and donate to to the thing which comes out every month so if you donate a dollar that'll come out every month twelve dollars a year for fucking whatever my dollars the actual podcast it amazes me that people will sign up you know that's the real effort for me because you could sign up it looks like it's like effort. You're like, for fuck's sake. And then you sign up and then a dollar goes out a month and it's all, that's the last thing you ever do. Um, and I'm amazed at that and I'm very thankful um, for everyone who does that. But then I take questions on podcasts and I'm, I'm about to slag a guy now. But I love you for signing up. But he said, I was watching the podcast and I noticed you have a tattoo in your arm that says Eddie on it. And the question was, did you get that tattoo when the baby was born, my son, who's called Eddie, or did you already have that? What the fuck are you talking about? Why the fuck would I have a tattoo that says Eddie on it long before I had a son called Eddie? Now, you could argue, like, oh, maybe you have a re- re- like a relation who's called Eddie or a dog or some bullshit. But let's face it, if you're getting the name of your dog tattooed in your arm, you're probably being in prison. And if you're getting the name of, like, another family member, you know, something horrendous probably happened. The answer to that, sir, is obviously I got the tattoo once my son was born and we decided on a name. Okay. So there you go. Hey Colin, was your name Colin? Did someone name you Colin? Or is Colin a name that you picked when you were like 21? Those things aren't the same. Anyway, I feel really like I've brought the tone down there. And uh, I feel bad. So we'll get back to what we do best and that is making fun of different accents here is an old italian man trying to say worcestershire sauce now in times like this it's important to really embrace racism any of the other isms to really get your fucking kicks now listen to this and piss yourself all right ready second we gotta use this one drop of one star shusha This, again, I'll put this clip up and people will be like, bro, have you been living in a fucking Bin Laden spare room for the last fucking 10 years? No. 
Ready, Sega. We gotta use this one just shush shush shush. We gotta get the red 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 Let's get the red 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 sauce. I mean, what's hilarious is if you look at a packet of Tato Worcester sauce, which it's Worcestershire sauce. They're like, nah, let's just write W-U-S-T-R sauce. Not named after the place. Nah, Worcester. Nah, I don't know. One just star shine. What? Yeah, one just One chain sting shine star. I would love a little drop of a Worcestershire star star. So fucking not right. Shine. One just... I seen a guy on the news and he was obviously Mexican or something. They're like, hey, we'll look out for a corned beef. Corned beef 19. Shara. One chest of shushar. Shushar? One chest sharin. No. One chest of schneider. You need to make a burden of schneider. Worcestershire? Worcestershire? Worcestershire. I mean, it's, he's doing a better job than fucking Guy Fieri. He's like, hey, put a little drop of Worcestershire in your shire. Fucking Americans. Uh, really. Aluminum you... Worcestershire. Shari. You know, all, all, all most of this argument that the drop of like my name is shut up. <laughs> Shar... Sh, w- one... Ch- one... Ch- steer. <laughs> one Chestershire? Steershire. I play for Worcestershire United. Yeah, Manchestershire. <laughs> I told you the truth. I don't know what kind of the, the country come of this from, but I'm Italian. I'm Italian. I mean, there's some people that are so fucking like, they're so they're so the thing that they are. You know, like you get some Glasgow people, and you're like, bro, you are like simmered down, reduced, fucking thick version of Glasgow. You know, you get the odd fucking, like, Biffy Claro type, and then you get the other ones where you're just like, Huh? What I gotta say? Italians, so deeply Italian. I read them. People the- from Derry, same. They they love the smell of their own shite, like. Worcestershire. Sa- fucking. <clears throat> the problem is, the way he just said that is probably the way that you should fucking say it. Worcestershire. Sa- sa- Worcestershire. It's an Italian now. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. That's probably how you should say it. Worcestershire. But people are like, no, it's Worcestershire. And, and then you're fucking Italian on what? I mean, there's a lot of Vietnamese words are like that, where it's like, you know, you're like, you know, I was talking to Sean in Vietnam. You're like, what is fucking NG fucking YM whatever? What the fuck is Nguyen? And he's like, when? And you're like, what? Then again, there's some Irish words or Irish names even where you're like, why does it sound like it's one syllable and it has fucking 19 letters in it? Bad comedy. Um, Sa- Sauche. <laughs> Sauche. The guy's wearing a t-shirt says no sweat, no sauce and he's still like, Worcestershire Sauche. Bro, look at your own t-shirt. Welcome to No Sweat, No Sauce. Uh, Hans Van Jastir sa- Sauce. Heinz Worcestershire Sauce. Yes, Sauce. Sauce. Van Jastir Sauce. That's the sauce. Uh, it's fucking hilarious because you can make fun of it, but like, you know fucking rightly nobody's saying. Bro, what the fuck is that? You know, rightly, nobody... Bro, what did I just do to my internet? I fucked it. I fucked it. What the fuck did I do? Worcestershire. I put a little drop of Worcestershire. Do you know what? You know... You could... I mean, you could take the piss... But you know that there's somebody walking around, you know, like the fucking little at Conswater trying to say, like, What do you want for dinner? Denise. What do you want for dinner? I don't know. Just, do you want to get a fucking, some fucking spaghetti? What? Some spaghetti? Spaghetti? Nah. Spaghetti? 
Tell you right, love. A better fucking... Fat sign. No, what my favorite past is? Fat sign. What are you talking about? It's... It's... It's the type of fucking... It's like we flat bits of spudge hatty. You know? But it's just... Fat sign. Fettuccine. The fuck do you call me, you fucking sectarian bastard? <laughs> do you have any tagliatelle? Do you have any fucking tagliatelles? I'd love a fucking ravi, ravi, ravioli. Give us a fucking ravioli, man. I love it. I would absolutely fucking die. If I just could get a fucking slice of Lizagin tonight. What is it? I just have a wild hankering for Lizagin. Are you saying lasagna? No. I'm saying fucking Lizagin. You better get me a fucking slice of Lizagin. Or I'm a fucking racket's place. Chucky cunt. <sighs> what other shit have I written down here? I don't know. We're on lockdown anyway. I want a piece of Worcestershire in the Shire sausages, bastard. Let me get some questions, bastard. 32 minutes. Um, how's everyone doing anyway? Is everyone doing well? <sighs> Fucking stuck inside. There is something funny about everyone getting Disney Plus and everyone will just rewatch Simpsons. Because that's what happens now. Nostalgia. People just are like, let me just watch The Simpsons and remember a time when I just came home from school. I took a nap in my uniform and then woke up and someone had made me dinner. And then I get to watch The Simpsons and my toes are all going like this. And that's. By the way, the fucking baby bugged in my ear earlier. And I just remembered that. And I had to change my t-shirt, but it has worked out for the best because this one's camouflage. And I swear to God, I, I was jiggling my bite, which is never a good idea. And then in my ear, and I'm going to go close to the mic right now, so watch your ears. This is all I heard. Yeah. In my fucking ear. Yeah. And I was like, uh, where is that? And it was dangling off my ear. God with a pearl earring or whatever the fuck it was called. Absolutely disgusting, man. But it's okay. It's fine because it's baby sick. So who gives a shit like it's grown adult. Shit, you fucking throw up all over the place. Grown adult, book. Um, let me just... By the way, the, the cancer ward at Craig Avon Area Hospital was opened by Patrick Keelty. I'll be honest with you. If someone uh, uh, like asked me to open a cancer ward, I probably I would do it for Maureen now, but I'd be like... Is, am I the right person to be doing this? You know? You know, I've, I've, I've been asked to introduce some bands at the OK Festival run by it, so I watch it from afar. And it's for mental health and suicide prevention. And even they were like, we asked you at first, but now we're like, probably not the best idea. And I'm like, Pro you're probably fucking right. <sighs> Let me hit some questions. By the way, I've seen that, that, that fucking meme with that black guy's fat cock more, more times than I've seen my own cock now, so that's fun. Would it have been better if the Prime Minister said to Northern Ireland it's a lock-in instead of a lockdown, as we would understand that better? P.S. He closed the fucking office. North Belfast will just riot. Now a lockdown sounds like WWE pay-per-view. Okay, I didn't really understand what any of that meant, but yeah, certainly if... If you said this, people in Ireland like, do you remember like, do you remember like you've you've been to a fucking uh, lock in? It's like that. Just pretend that you're not even allowed outside to smoke, and you gotta stay in. And I I'm trying to find a page here. Yes, here we go. This is, someone sent me this. This is very much what it's like at the minute. I hope this is the video. Please play. Please, for the love of Jesus. Lockdown in Belfast, day one. I can't get the chippy. I can't get the journey. I can't even get the paper. What's all this? <laughs> Lockdown in Belfast, day one. 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 L
get the champion, I can't 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 get the champion, I don't know what he says. He goes, I can't get that chippy. I can't get that Chinese. I, can't, I think he says, I can't even get a paint. Is that what he says? What's all this? <laughs> I can't get that chippy. I can't get that Chinese. I can't even get the paint. What's all this? What's all this? <laughs> I can't get that chippy. That's, that's, <clears throat> that's how I feel when anybody decides to like, parade or fucking roadblock or anything and that goes for 12th of july that goes for pride that goes for any sort of fucking protest that's going on you're like i can't get that chippy i can't fucking get that chinese you know i'm a same cut to be writing on the wall foreigners out it's fucking spelled f-o-r-n-e-r-s foreigners out but i'll take a fucking chinese like i'm not a fool fucking racist get the fuck what's all this i love that I can't get that journey. I can't even get that What's all this? What's all this? I can't get that I can't even get that I mean, it's it's all fun and games. They're like, I can't even get a fucking battered sausage up in this bastard. What's all this? Fuck shit. I can't even get a fucking <laughs> an authentic Chinese me. Like a fucking chippies on your gravies? Fuck off! What's all this? By the way, I'm gonna be like... I was gonna say 90 years old. I ain't getting to 90. But I'll be older. And I'll be like... It looks great, man. And they'll be like, where's your voice like that? And I'll be like... Well, basically, I was just doing impressions of people, you know, stuck behind a bar here. In the 80s, by the looks of it. What's all this? What's all this fucking shit? I can't get the chippy, I can't get the journey. I can't even get the paint. I love the way there's like a there's like a fucking human chain of uh policemen there and he's just got his head between the gap like oh I can't even get the fucking chippy I love that. I absolutely love that. That is shout out to the page and I Instagrammed. Where it's just like a load of classic sort of, you know, images from Northern Ireland. Mainly Trumbulls based. Um, brilliant. Now I'm, just, now I'm just looking at all this shit. Very cool, very cool. I can't... Eat. Is that fucking Jerry Adams just with a Hurley? Just smacking some... I was never in the GAA. Belter caption. Belter. Love it. There he is. Um, <clears throat> Hurling's wild, isn't it? You know, I I never went to a school that did fucking GAA sports. But even at that, I would still be playing rugby. Because sometimes it's not your upbringing or your religion or your background that dictates what sport you play. Often, it is your physique. And speaking of physique, I was clicking through stories, and these boys, I think rugby lads, are doing this ugly face challenge. And uh, what they do is, you post a photo of you, like, making a pass or getting tackled, and you, you do have a bit of a fucking wincing face, like, oops. And, uh, Jacob Stockdale, you know, international rugby superstar Jacob Stockdale, his story came up there. We've we've went back and forth a couple of times, we're good mates. He's there's a photo of him doing the old ugly face thing. And uh for fuck's sake, come on. He's wearing the Ireland rugby training shirt, which is the one I have. And needless to say, they look different. When he's got it on, it looks good. When I got it on, you know, it looks like I'm wearing a fucking moo. But Sure, what can you do? That's what being a professional athlete does for your body, you know. Let me hit some questions from the old Instagram, because that's how that's what we do every week. Uh ideas on how to live in the last days would be cool. A bit dark, but you could put good comedy spin on it regarding certain characters and professions in society, by the way. Yeah, okay. That's a that's a very that's almost like a 
I should have an OnlyFans because that sounds like a bespoke. Like, could you maybe talk about what it's like at the end of days for certain characters and professions in society? I can't speak for anybody. I mean, everyone's going to experience the fucking end of days in the same fashion if this is in fact the end of days, which is I talked about last the last podcast, just staring at the window, starving to death, going, "Does it look like anyone's still alive?" You know, and then you slowly go to sleep in the corner, shivering, and then die. Which is a fairly morbid thought. We're not going to do that, though. If you would just fucking stay in the house, you dick. Well, that's not going to happen to me. I'm just going to go ahead and take all my mates to the fucking... Have a part, have a hot tub party in my house and drink the water. Uh, I'm mental. Now that no one... No... <clears throat> now that, uh... No one got... What? Now that no one can got can get to a cafe anymore, what was the top three coffees in Northern Ireland? Um, now, what I will say is, there is a place that we go to very often. We'll give it a shout-out, because I want everyone to go there once it reopens. In the, in the Moy, of all places, the Moy. Okay? Which is in between... It's the taint of Tyrone and Armagh. But it's like a wee small town, and uh, there's a place in there called Brew, and I had a chat with the guy who runs it recently, and I was like, bro, do you reckon me and you could collaborate on a coffee, because they roast their own coffees? And I will tell you this, and this is 100% true, their cappuccinos are the best fucking cappuccinos in the world. And it's like... You know, you get the shitty cappuccino, it's real fluffy. It's basically, they give you a latte because they're just like, I'll just give you all the milk. Theirs is like, not not a kick in the arse off a of flat white, to be honest, but very nice, very silky. The coffee's fucking amazing. And <clears throat> me and Maureen go there quite a lot because, you know, I live in the sticks now. I'm a full-blown culture, but we'll go there a lot. And also, it's always for brunch because, you know what I mean? I'm balling out of control and I've nothing to fucking do in the morning. And I like to... Remember that by going and spending upwards of forty pound for a brunch. Now, we we everywhere we go, you, you sip the fucking coffee, whether it's a flat white or a cappuccino or something. You go, that's not as good as Brew's one, and we do that quite a lot. And that's why I had a conversation with the guy going, "Can we do like a collaboration where I have the general coffee and uh, the general brew, and uh, you sell it?" for me or I'll sell it for you or whatever the fucking way it works but their cappuccinos are the shit um, outside of that the other ones I can think of I mean established in Belfast is obviously fucking banging and General Merchants is fucking banging too Cafe O is also decent but then again those other two places you're kind of taking the double whammy of you can get some sweet brunch in there too you can get it in Cafe O as well, but sure, who gives a fuck? Mm. You know what? Do you, I mean, it's a bit, it's a bit too far gone. You know what I mean? Where it's like, yeah, this is, um, this is a lentil fucking soup with some fucking homemade, you know, oat fucking. What do you call that shit? What do you call that shit? Granola on the top, and you're like, I don't want that. Whereas other places do bang in fucking brunches. And by the way, am I a millionaire's wife the way I'm talking right now about brunches? It's one of my favorite things. But yeah, brew in the Moy, which you might go, there's no way there's a place in the country that does the best coffees you've ever had. And they're, it's fucking true, man. Also, we've been past the Happy Pear and Greystones, which is very big on the internet. And they're all fucking, you know, avocado on toast and healthy shits. Their coffee's banging too. Um, I can't wait till this fucking thing is over just so that I can... every. I swear to God, I'm going to get up in the morning, I'm going to go for a run, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like, right, what can we go for early morning breakfast? And we go somewhere for breakfast, and then we sit around all morning with notebooks, dreaming up funny things to do and trips to take. And then by that stage, it's like brunchy lunchtime. And then we get another thing. And we've just sat there for like four or five hours. Can't wait. Spend like £100 on coffees. I'm absolutely dripping at the tip for that. Question for the podcast. Have you watched Tiger King on Netflix? Uh, thoughts on your man, Joe Exotic? 
I mean, the guy's a fucking legend, clearly. I did watch it. He's got bullet wounds tattooed on his body. I watched it. It was amazing. And just, you know, you see guys like that, and eventually at the point where he gave up, he was just like, okay, nobody won this fight about, you know, he was fighting with this woman over fucking, you know, animal rights. And, oh my God, people fucking... Be, right, I need to go right back to the start. If you haven't seen it, there's this fucking gay weirdo. And it doesn't matter that he's gay, but it's funny that he's gay because he's like, I'm so I'm over here with my tigers and I'm dressed like a fucking rodeo clown and these are my two hubs bins. Hubs bins? My two hubs bins. And there's these two guys who are a hundred percent straight, but they're just like, Yeah man, thing is I like taking meth. And I can't afford meth, but this man over here can afford meth because he's flamboyant and has a bunch of trucks and tigers and whatnot. And he can buy me meth. So what I do is, he buys me meth. I let him ejaculate in my asshole. And then, I go right back over here. And I fuck the receptionist, Tanya. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. So they had these two fucking dudes. Meanwhile, there's one dude who was like 19 when he joined. And he's all like, oh, he's like six foot six. This big giant fucking tan guy who could probably be just sprinkling jizz over everybody but instead he kept them in the meth bubble and uh you know the guy stayed on the on the zoo where they all lived and fucking ended up <laughs> shooting them. spoiler alert shot himself in front of uh all the staff in the head so that's cool um but yeah it's basically he's just this very flamboyant character who owns a zoo and tries to run for fucking president and it's fucking mad and he has this full hatred towards this other woman who owns another big cat sanctuary and she's trying to end his career because he's breeding them and she doesn't want to breed them. And then you find out that she might have killed her husband and then you're like, I wonder did she? I wonder didn't she? And then, uh, you know, you find out she, she says all of a sudden like, I was, I was raped at knife point. And you go, yep, she killed her husband because that's what happens. Anyone that's suffered abuse like that usually, you know, can carry that with them the rest of their lives and then kill someone. Because you see that all the time. Like, you know, some guy who's a well-known serial killer and then they're like, and what happened in his childhood? And they're like, oh, his mother basically put fucking cigarettes out on his genitals when he was a child. And then what do you know? He kills a hundred women and wears their face. You know what I mean? It's the circle of life. Raped at knife point, kills her husband over a minor dispute. What can you do? But the whole uh, the whole fucking documentary is tremendous, and he's f- and by the way, I don't know what it is about. You know, you got this guy who's like, I've got these, I got multiple, what is it, polygamous? I got multiple hubs bins. And you got these young, that's a more inside person, like young hot guys coming from. And I was like, steady on you thirsty bish. You know, but then there's another dude who, uh, and there's always some cunt with a pony, a grey ponytail and a soul patch and teeth that look like they're made out of smashed up limpet shells, who's like, I have nine wives. And then it shows you all the girls and they're all these like, I mean, things are right up my alley. They look like hot chicks that would be like, <laughs> they look like, you know, like they were in a, in a Playboy in the 90s, into it. And, uh, you know, He's got like fucking 10 girlfriends and they're all like, well, initially I sort of fell for the fact that he said I could be, I could be enlightened if, if only, you know, I, he was, he was allowed to enter me sexually. And they're like, and what did you do? Well, basically I fucking had sex with him continuously for about 10 years. And you're like, this guy with the fucking soul patch. It's very charming. What are you talking? I'm charming. I'm not banging fucking 10, 21 year olds. You know what I mean? I don't have any tigers. Granted. <sighs> also, yeah, I was talking about seeing that meme with the guy with the big fat black cock. Uh, his name is Wood and he died in 2000, 2016. God only takes the good ones. <laughs> he probably got one boner and passed out and knocked his head on something. 
Listen to an old podcast uh, last week and you and Maureen talked about the My Little Pony shoes you had to wear. Please tell us the story again. Haven't laughed this hard in so long. Are you sure, bro? I mean, I don't know what how we made it funny at the time, but basically, whenever I, I can remember being in like, pr- not primary school, it was like play schooly type thing. In the kindergarten. And uh, I just remember spilling water. They had some little water bath thing and I spilled water all over my shoes. And they were like, right. Obviously, the people who work there are like, we don't want to send this guy. We don't want the the parents to turn up. The kids wearing wet shoes, and they're like, why is he wearing wet shoes all day? And you let him walk around in wet shoes. So the I got water in the shoes basically, and uh, they took the socks and shoes off and put them on the radiator, and fucking yeah, the the only shoes they gave me in the meantime were like My Little Pony slippers. And I was so embarrassed that I ran down to the little playground area and ran into the slide and hid in the tubes. There's like a tube slide, which is probably illegal now. And just hid in the tube going, I can't let anyone see. Man, my street cred is going to be ruined. I'm four. And I, it's going to be ruined if anyone sees me in these My Little Pony thing. Now, jump forward a bunch of years. Jump forward a bunch of years. And I'm actually wearing these right now. That's what I'm actually wearing for real. Okay, that's a pair of fucking New Balance, fucking, what are they, 997s, bro, orange, and a pair of Vans checkered socks, and I'm a grown man. If someone had my little, like a pair of My Little Pony fucking Air Force Ones or something, I'd be like, fucking right, pretend like I'm in dip set. But at the time, scundered, scundered. Now, let's wrap this up with the questions. Philosophical question for you, Colin, uh, from P. Evans. Dicks for nipples or nipples for a dick? Dicks for ni- dicks for nipples, obviously. Um, I'd rather have an actual dick and then two dicks for nipples. You don't want, like, a nipple where your dick should be? Fuck's sake, man. How's the wife doing? Do you have a routine plan for the quarantine or are you just going with the flow? Bro, what the fuck is a routine? Chris... We there is no routine around here. The closest to a routine that there's gonna be is I'm gonna try and do three podcasts a week. So that's that's the fucking routine. But yeah, we're not a, we're not big routine guys. How do you feel about the and I see all these fucking lunatics where they're like, Oh, we've got a four week old baby and here's the fucking routine that we do and you're like, What? Uh suck my dick. You're like, oh here's the fucking feeding time. So you're like the baby's four weeks old, the baby feeds when it fucking wants to feed and you work around it basically you fucking lunatic oh no we put him to bed here that's what happens da, da, da. We, mm. no you decided to have a child accept the chaos that ensues for the next few months also you gotta just give a child a baby everything it needs to the point where it feels safe like our son where now he's just like man I'll just f-. he'll just chill you know what I mean he knows if he goes like <laughs> Someone's going to come near him and just fucking feed him immediately. So he just fucking wakes up in the middle of the night sometimes, just lies there awake, just like, mm, I'm just chilling, bro. I'm just awake, I'm not distressed or anything. I'm just fucking, you know what I mean, just chilling. You know, just fucking relaxed, man. Until you pick him up and then he fucking in your ear, but sure. How do you feel about the fact we're in lockdown? Well, it's fucking annoying, and I'll tell you why. Because we've had a baby... And, you know, that takes a certain amount of months to get used to. You know, Maureen has been receiving chemotherapy, which is uh, weird um, and stressful. Um, and then we'd been looking forward to the time when she got the last one over her and we could really focus on getting her fit again and really enjoy ourselves. You know, I'd done the biggest shows of my life in January. Still haven't really had a time to fucking, like, celebrate, whatever that means, whether it was... Take a short fucking hotel trip to somewhere. You know, it could be just anything nice. I haven't done anything sort of fucking nice in a long time. And now it's looking like it's not going to happen yet either. So it's fucking slightly fucking uh, annoying. Probably a bit late for the questions, but what do you think of Larry David slash Curb Enthusiasm? And that's from Dan. Yeah, I absolutely fucking love it. It's one of... I mean... If you go back to like a time whenever 
I was, uh, so, ba- so basically like how I got into comedy was I, I just, I just never thought of it being possible or never thought of it as a real thing or got the opportunity. So when I went to uni, I thought I was going to do like design and stuff, went to foundation year, didn't get into my course in Belfast. So I ended up going to McGee and Derry doing like a course called design and communication where they let you do like a whole bunch of stuff. And I remember being allowed to make a video once and I made a video that was kind of funny. And then I was like, fuck. And then I made one that I was trying to make deliberately funny. People were like, oh, that's really good. And then I I was like, fuck. I had made like a couple of videos and then I was so obsessed with like certain types of comedy. And they literally were like, it was basically The Office, um, like Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Ace Bound and Down. Um, what else was there? Like Spinal Tap. There was a movie called American Movie, which is very good. And there's one called Kenny, which I think is like an Australian thing. And I just remember like drinking it all in. And then that that led into things like fucking me doing the <clears throat> like I Am Fighter video. And just all, there was a lot of like little things that I like stole from it. Not lines or anything, but just little bits of timing and editing and stuff like that. So yeah. Curb was definitely, like, very influential. But it's a thing I need to do more of, which is, like, make videos that are that are improvised a lot because I think that's probably might be one of my strengths. But I never really... In a bid to make videos quicker, I would then start to write them, which kind of fucks it up a wee bit. So I probably need to get back and do more of that. I realise that now that I'm locked inside, which is handy. But yeah, Larry David's a fucking genius, like... Everyone's like, oh, Seinfeld's good. He might as well be going. Uh, Larry David's class, isn't he? <laughs> Let me see. Is that the end of the questions? Is that the end of the questions? How's your wife doing? Oh, that's the same question. That's a video of young Ellie. Let me see. Is there? No, that's it. That's the end of the questions, man. I thought we had more questions, but fuck me, we don't. Let me just double check the Patreon. See if there's any questions over here. Uh, nah, don't see any new questions. How wild, man. That sort of brings us to the end of the old... Uh, any idea what... What does it say? Any idea what the podcast is with the creepy voicemail from Scottish guy from some girl? Absolutely fucking no idea. Absolutely. Oh, this shout out to this guy for like... Colin, I love you, but the last podcast sucked tranny ass. <laughs> Lose the whole running out of stuff to say theme and make us laugh. Sorry, not taking advantage of because I'm on the Patreon, but you can do better. Talk about fucking anything. Bring in callers. I'm game. Call me. Now, I dare say that guy had taken a load of poppers and was blocked when he sent that. Sorry, Colin. Discard my emails from last night. You shouldn't have, have to sift through that shit. Correct. And if I look into how to block people on fucking Patreon, next. Um, I know that. I mean, that's that's the world for you. You know what I mean? You think like, uh, you know, I'll set up the Dead on Mafia page. I'll get the fucking Patreons in, and uh, you know, <laughs> maybe we'll avoid all the bullshit and the fucking trolls that I usually encounter. And then once people have invested a wee bit, they're like, Nah, do what I say now. You know, people going, keep making those videos happen, fat boy. Thank you. Bro, your podcast shit. Your fifth podcast of the week was shit. You cannot win around these cunts. Unbelievable. And I'll tell you what, bro. The podcast was hilarious. So you can get the fucking snorkel out too. Um, <clears throat> speaking of fat boys... I've been counting calories this week. I might have talked about it briefly last week. This is this is hilarious, isn't it? All the shit that I've tried to do. Oh, no carbs. Oh, I'm going to work out more. Blah, blah. And then, and no wonder people harp on about it so much. Just keep track of what you eat, man. And number one, I was surprised 
at how much you can actually eat. You think like, oh, I'm going to start counting my calories, I'm going to have my breakfast, and then I'm going to have a fucking bowl of soup, and that's going to be my calories nearly taken up for the day. And it's not really, because many nights... Now, I calculated the thing. It's probably not 100% accurate. So, like, it was like, okay, if you want to lose two, two, two pounds a week, which they deem as, like, safe, they're like, eat... Their prediction was 2,650 calories, okay? Now, I thought to myself... Let's call that 2,500 for toxic, right? Let's call it that. Now, what what actually ends up happening is most days I'm like, man, I've probably eaten all my calories. And then I go and double check it. And I'm like, oh, I've already eaten my dinner. And I still have fucking 800 calories left. And a lot of the times you're like, well, I don't need to force myself to eat 800 calories. I can just eat another thing that might be like two, three hundred calories, and that w- that's just like a snack in the evening, and then you're grand. You can go to. You know what I did yesterday? You know what I did yesterday? I'd eaten so well, and then and I was just looking after baby that long, and then I was up from fucking six, and then he fell asleep in the afternoon, and I was like, do you know what? There, I'm I, I'm just gonna go to sleep beside him here because there's fucking nothing else to do. By the time I did that, got up, ate some dinner. I, honestly, I was like, I have eight hundred calories left to eat. And I wasn't even that hungry. So what I did was, I had a fucking cream egg. Now, not not advised probably if you're a fitness person, but I'm like, if I've still 800 calories left on the thing and I ha- eat 150 calories, which seems like a gloopy chocolate mess and a cup of tea, we're all good, man. Got up this morning, went for a run, went to the doctor's, girl met me at the door like the fucking, you know, like she was in fucking E.T. <laughs> With all the shit on. Thank you. Took the prescription. There you go, count your calories, guys. You'd be surprised how much you're actually allowed to eat. It's phenomenal. And my point is, weighed myself. Now, I know this is just water, but, and maybe like a bit of fat, but like, I weighed myself in after a week, and it was, I swear to God, nine pounds down. It was nine pounds lighter than it was the week before, which is amazing just to show you. Now, number one, how much of a fucking man rhino I am. And second of all, how much shit your body holds on to when you're just eating a load of bollocks. Cut all the bollocks out, man. Watch what you're eating for a wee bit, and then it's all of a sudden, it's like, oh yeah, you're fucking nine pounds lighter. It won't show on anything, but, you know, we'll keep it going for a while, see what the crack is. You know, might just, I might just use this lockdown time, might just come out the other end looking like Statham. Just go full Statham on it. Who knows? I've said it a million times in this podcast. Maybe we, maybe we all join in on this movement and, you know, post our fucking, post our weight loss or something. Who knows? Uh, but it would be, re- I'd love to just do one of those one of those photos one time where you're like, yeah, this is me now. And then people go, oh, fair play, mate. You baldy cunt. You know what I mean? Like, the, they'll, they'll just move on to the next slagging. They'll be like, oh, you used to you're, you used to be a fat cunt. And I, you lost weight. And it's like, oh, all right, you baldy cunt. You know, and then I get a hair trans- transplant. It's like, what's up, you fucking pale, fucking unfunny cunt? There's always something. Even in, even when the world is falling apart, you know, people are fucking coughing up blood and dying. People will still be like, here, fat boy, make some more podcasts. Unbelievable. Some people just need their mouth coughed right into it at this point. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to make cheese on toast and I'm going to put on it some fucking Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. 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 Worcestershire sauce. 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 Eins. Worcestershire sauce. Right, guys. I'm going to get out of here. It's Wednesday. Um. We'll figure it out. I'll have another think about it. The podcasts are either going to be like Thursday, Saturday, Tuesday, or they might go Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Something like that. Okay? But cheers for listening. If you want access to the other podcasts, go over to patreon.com. Get the app on your phone. Patreon.com forward slash Gender Podcast. And 
donate me a fucking dollar up in this bitch because that's how I'm making money these days since I'm not doing live shows. But that'll get you access to more podcasts. And you'll probably see later on today, um, we're going to cut a load of clips which are going to be on the Dead on Mafia page. Um, some of the clips might also be put out to sort of tease people over onto the Patreon. Um, but you may you might see a lot of clips and go, oh shit, what podcast was that from? And if you don't know, it'll be from a Patreon podcast, basically. So that's it, guys. Stay in the fucking house, will you? Don't be like one of these cunts who are like, oh, I'm not, I don't have to go into work. So me and the mates are just doing laps of the town in the fucking sack. So don't be a stupid cunt. Just stay in, you know, don't even work out. You know, everyone's like, you got to do a home workout. No, no, you don't. Just fucking eat all your fucking rations. And then the cat. And that's it. That's it, guys. Um, And I dare say, moisturize the penis. Because some people are going to just have a rip their cock off. Okay. Okay. Cheers for listening, guys. Take her handy. Take her hand sanitandy. Sanitize your hands. Take it easy.